Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is uh, Alan's Cloud and my name is Alan Samsel. Um, today's video, I'm just going to do a quick one, is about uh, setting up uh, an LXC container to run Docker inside of a Proxmox uh, hypervisor. Um, I had first started off with a true virtual machine like I've done every other time. I've never run an LXC container before. Um, and uh, so I created a virtual machine and then I used Alpine Linux as a base uh, and set up Docker and had a few things running here and there and just, you know, kind of ran into uh, some permissions issues and uh, things that I wasn't too, um, you know, sure of uh, inside of there. And uh, the more that I started researching uh, LXCs and, and, and using containers for this, um, with some of the more recent changes uh, to Proxmox, uh, it's it's a lot easier to do it now and do it in a uh, sort of a safe environment. So um, that's what this video is going to be about. So if you're interested, stick around. All right. Uh, so to start this off, I'm going to uh, you know we're going to jump right into the hypervisor um, configuration management page uh, for Proxmox, and uh, I'm going to step you through the creation of uh, an LXC. Uh, container which um, this was the first time I had done it and uh, so there was a you know a couple of speed bumps here and there that hopefully I can help you smooth over so uh, here we are this is um, uh, the Proxmox homepage uh, this is actually a, a, a custom style sheet from a guy on reddit I just installed the other day looks kind of cool it's it's uh, based off of uh, the discord actually <laughs> um, so and, and you can turn it on and off. There's a program called uh, Stylish, which is a, a um, you know a plugin for Firefox is what I'm running here. Um, but you, you know the basic information. So you can see I'm I'm running. Uh, I actually have it up and running right now. This is my Docker LXC, and you can see that the container here is is a little bit different than a virtual machine. Um, you know this is my uh, web server. Um, this is an instance of Teapot uh, that uh, you uh, find out how to install in a, a different video that I've done. Uh, and, and this one here is my main Windows server itself, um, running all kinds of different applications. Um, so for uh, creating a container, uh, you come up here and you hit the Create CT button. Um, well, let's, let's back up one second even further. Uh, on your local storage, you have to create a container from a template. And uh, I didn't have any templates. I thought they were just naturally in there. Uh, it turns out they're not. So you you got to go to your local storage, and you go to um, and and on my local storage here, this is where all of the ISO files for uh, installing the virtual machines that I've uh, you know toyed around with. This is the teapot ISO down here. Uh, these are some you know that I have available. And this was the Alpine. Uh, version that I uh, created the first virtual machine uh, for this Docker experimentation with um, um, just happens to be there. But uh, for containers, in, instead of these ISO files here under under you know contents, this is the button you want to click. Um, go to templates, and um, at first this was all empty, and uh, there's a button down here at the bottom that says uh, download, and um, you you want to hit that button and it will go out and it will grab all of these different uh, container templates uh, to make this you know super easy to install I, you know down here these turnkey Linux ones um, all kinds of interesting options but not necessarily anything that I wanted to run um, but what I wanted to use as the base for my container for running docker in uh, because there's all kinds of uh, install instructions um, out there on the web that you can find uh, you know Google those they're pretty easy um, uh, Ubuntu you know that's a very very common distribution and um, you know so it's, it's got a good kernel in there and a lot of people are running things off of it so what I used um, was this uh, Ubuntu 1804 standard that was the container that I did and what you what you have to do um, is uh, is actually you know select it and then download um, that to your local machine so I've only selected two containers I did this one the 1804 and I did um, the Alpine Linux, I think the latest one here, the, the uh, 3.9 was the one that I selected just to just to have in there in case I wanted to recreate an LXC with an Alpine base um, in case the Ubuntu didn't work out. Turns out Ubuntu works perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and uh, set up 
an LXC container with Ubuntu um, 1804 as the base for the container. That's the, going to be the kind of the core operating system under the hood. Um, so you can see I'm running one here, that Docker LXC. Um, we're going to create a new test one. So under create, we're going to give it a host name of test LXC. Uh, important bit here is uh, to make it an unprivileged container. Uh, that's for security purposes. You don't want it to be able to communicate uh, with any of uh, other devices on your network uh, on purpose. Um, so the password, we're just going to put in temporary password. Okay. So And then next, or you can just hit that template button up there. Um, so the templates uh, that we downloaded uh, earlier... Um, you're going to select local here because that's where those templates are actually stored and then it's going to pop up and you can see that I have two of them here. I have that Ubuntu 18.04 and I have the Alpine. Uh, never ended up using that. So we're going to select uh, the Ubuntu 18.04. Go to next. Now on our root disk, uh, this is the hard drive where we're going to store it. Um, uh, interesting thing, I had enough space. I first started off with a 32 gigabyte um, you know, hard drive for the virtual machine, um, and I was actually able to uh, expand it. And uh, I may may tell you how I did that later on. But um, give it as much size as you want. I, I with that 32 gig, I ran out of space after I think uh, five Docker instances. Uh, they weren't you know really big, but between the um, you know base for Ubuntu and then Docker itself, and then the other containers. You know, I was left with probably, I think, six gigs left uh, of space out of that 32 um, after all those other containers I was running. Um, and uh, you run into, um, I guess it's a known issue, it's inodes. You, you run out of, you know, whatever this resource is that uh, it's requiring and it couldn't set up that final uh, Docker container for me. Um, so give it a good amount of size. I'm only going to leave it at uh, eight gig right here. Um, just just because this is the test um, so cores you know you can give it four cores um, how many ever you have to spare memory you probably want to give it you know two gigs of RAM and um, swap 512 is fine um, network you know you can give it a static uh, address or you can just let it pull DHCP static is better because you'll always know where it's located uh, so we're going to give it 192.168.0. Dot dot uh, let's just 220. 192.168.0.1 for our gateway. Oh, an important piece. It has to be CIDR notation. So we're going to do slash 24. That gives us our next button. Uh, DNS, use the host. That's fine. Uh, and then the next piece here just gives you. Um, you know all the information about what we've just created and you can start it if you want right afterwards but um, I don't recommend it because there's a couple of tweaks that you're going to want to do to optimize this system so we're just going to finish this it's going to create it and uh, shouldn't take too long these containers are, are, are fairly quick um, gonna create some keys see here and task okay and we're done and see it uh, the stop button went away uh, so done relatively quickly um, and so you can see up here at the top we have um, the test LXC container that we just created so one of the things that you uh, want to do here is go come here into options and um, double click on features uh, you can you know, either highlight it and hit that edit button up here at the top or you can just double click it um, so the two things that you really need to to do here is turn on this key ctl and nesting um you know i actually watched a video uh tech id was a, a, a you know gentleman in uh germany named christian and uh, he runs his own channel over there and um you know my german's really rusty but i was at least able to follow along with what he was doing and he was using a recent version of proxmox and and uh, he had a whole bunch of uh, lxc containers um so you know this this apparently this nesting feature is what allows us to be able to run docker uh, inside of the container um, 
Don't don't know about Fuse yet. I haven't really messed with that setting, but that wasn't there before. I'm I'm on the latest version of of uh, uh, the the PVE here, uh, 5.3-9. Uh, um, so after setting those two there, then you can hit OK, and um, you know once you have everything set up and running just fine, start at boot. You know is is probably something that you want to do so that at any time that you reboot your Proxmox machine, in my case it's a Dell R710, um, you know, Proxmox boots up and then it actually starts up each one of my virtual machines uh, and the, the Docker container and then it spins up all of the Docker instances. Um, so with all of those in place, um, you actually fire up the, um, you know, your, your container by hitting start and then you console in and uh, pretty much you're going to go um, here, well, let's just fire it up and see what happens. <coughs> and there you have it. Um, so at this point, you'd be able to log in with your uh, uh, password that you set up on the other screen. And of course, the login is root. And let me see here, what did I set that to? Okay. Uh. and there we go okay and uh, so so basically that is how you go about setting up a Ubuntu LXC container inside of Proxmox uh, and from this point on now that you're uh, inside of it you go ahead and um, install docker you know um, and then uh, start playing around with your containers and um, you know start learning from there and and uh, I think my next couple of videos will probably be about uh, installing uh, a couple of different uh, docker containers I may start off with the installation of docker but that's covered pretty much everywhere it's a couple of commands that you're gonna throw at this and and um, uh, you know you'll have docker running under the hood relatively quickly that's not the hard part um, it's the command line and pieces like that um, so again, this video is about um, installing a container version of um, Ubuntu uh, in order to install Docker on top of it uh, inside of the Proxmox uh, um, hypervisor. So uh, if you liked the video, if it was uh, helpful, let me know. I uh, appreciate the feedback. And uh, just remember to subscribe if you haven't. And hopefully uh, there will be uh, you know, more videos along this uh this track about Docker and containers. I'll show you some of the ones that I'm running. Actually, I'll kind of give you a preview right now. This is one of my favorite, Heimdall. Um, Heimdall, uh, you know, is completely customizable. Uh, I have buttons here for all of the different, you know, web tools and things that I want to to run. Um, you know, it's a, a running and, and portainer, of course. You know, that's my I uh, am running a Docker uh, container of Portainer so that I can have a GUI to go ahead and be able to control um, uh, all of all of my containers. Um, so Guacamole is another container I'm running in there, um, you know, and and I'm running a uh, uh, the Boink server in there for uh, doing SETI at home. Um, you know, having having a real good time uh, with these Docker instances and uh, learning how all this works. Um, and even the, the Heimdall apps, uh, you know, these are uh, standard, you know, they call them foundation apps. And I use a program called ZigmaNAS um, or XNAS, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, it was a, a fork of uh, or a rebranding of NAS for free, uh, which was based off of the earliest versions of uh, free NAS before it kind of took its own track. Anyway, um, there's a way to... Uh, fork that on github the Heimdall apps that give you all these foundation apps and you can actually create your own and I created a foundation app uh, for Zygmunas uh, so now you know it's it's part of the drop down when you create all these tiles um, so very interesting uh, weekend of doing all these different projects um, and uh, getting all this up and running you know now that I've uh, screwed it up and fixed it a few times it's uh, it's uh, you know fairly easy to set these things up so uh, again i think that'll be the videos uh the next videos that i do is uh, how to go about actually setting those containers up and um you know getting all of these kinds of things up and running
So um, again, like and subscribe. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks.